This is a juice barrel, I think. It's so hard to retrofit these things to fit the downspouts properly and then also have an overflow. You're putting in extra holes and there's three bung holes at the top and then they cut this one for the, for the downspout, but there's a couple problems. What's the first problem you all see? Mosquitoes. Yeah, you're gonna, there's holes everywhere and you're gonna have to find a way to fill those holes. There's no overflow. I don't see a hose coming off of it, so it's just gonna spout water out of the top. Um, those are the two main ones I see with this barrel. You can, you can retrofit it, it's just gonna take a little working, which is why these are great because they already have that stuff built in. And then safety tips. <laughs> I don't know where Bonnie found this picture, but it was great. So I always leave it in. So remember a full 60 gallon rain barrel weighs about 500 pounds, 480, and um, a 50, one, 50 gallon weighs 400. So make sure that it has that proper foundation. I can't stress that enough. Now we're getting into what you can do with the water after it, you know, you've got this overflow hose. What the heck am I gonna do with the rest of that water? Remember I asked you that at the beginning? So you live in the Chesapeake Bay watershed and if you've never heard of Baywise, this is a really great program. Um, you can get your yard Baywise certified. Um, all you have to do is call up the extension and they will come out and survey your yard. And if you qualify, they'll give you a sign. If you don't, they will help you get there. They'll tell you what plants to put in, what things to get rid of, all that sort of stuff. It's a really great program. So here's some ideas for what you can do. We'll go through these. You can capture your polluted stormwater, of course, with rain gardens. You can plant riparian buffers. Does everybody know what a riparian buffer is? It's uh, trees along a waterway, along a stream, or along a lakefront, because um, trees are really excellent at taking up and filtering excess nutrients and sediment, and they capture all that stuff, and they hold the banks in, and they keep the water cool, and that's best for fish. Um, so they, they have a lot of different benefits to them. Wildflower meadows, um, I'll give you a caveat for that one in a little bit. Um, hummingbird or butterfly gardens, this is my top choice. If you want to put in a garden with this, do a hummingbird and butterfly garden. You'll be very, very happy with it and it's easier to maintain. <laughs> so if, you're, if you wanna pick one of these, do that one. And of course the next one, which is remove turf. Um, I have an entire talk called Trouble with Turf, if you're ever interested. Uh, and instead of concrete or asphalt, of course, install turf block or pervious pavers so that you can get the water to soak through the soil. So what are rain gardens? They are these saucer-shaped landscapes that they let the stormwater go in and soak into the soil. The whole point is to have plants in there that can soak up all the excess gunk and keep the stormwater out of the storm drain system. We don't even want it to go to the streams. This way, it goes and becomes uh, groundwater and it's cleaned in the process. So the soil acts like a sponge and takes up all those extra toxins. And then, of course, it's on-site stormwater management. The idea is to, to disconnect your downspout and take a, a downspout, maybe two downspouts, away from that whole stormwater system and keep it on-site. So you're just replenishing the groundwater there. Riparian buffers, this is, um, I wanna show you this picture. This was before the riparian buffer went in and of course they provide vital habitat, filtration, sediment, they regulate water temps, that's after. It's pretty dramatic. That was in a span of, I think, less than 10 years. So, and that's a trout stream. And that's really important. It's very critical to have trees overhanging trout streams because it, prevent, it provides shade and keeps the water cool for them. They can't survive. Even if the water uh, increases by two degrees, they will not survive. So keep that in mind. And native plant gardens, this is an example of one. This is more of a meadow, but meadows are very difficult to maintain. You really have to keep after them for a few years. But you can also use this uh, same scheme for butterfly and bird gardens, um, providing habitat and make sure you have a diverse plant scheme. They take up and filter the water, they keep the weeds down, and they improve the soil structure. That's really key too. The soil structure, is a critical component because it's going to be taking up all that storm water. All the water that goes through here and goes to a garden, just remember that that soil has to be able to absorb it. So you need kind of good quality soil. If you need to amend it with compost, do it. And that's it.
there you go. Emmitsburg Evening, evening Yoga. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. That was great. You're welcome. Are there any questions for Jenny while she's here? Flowers, if you want a meadow, you're going to be, like I was just saying, you're going to be after it for about five years. Um, a meadow is difficult to get established. So the reason I say that is uh, from experience. Um, you can take about 100 square feet a year. I wouldn't recommend more than that. And seed it and then let it get established and you'll have to reseed it the next year and pick out all the weeds, reseed it, pick out all the weeds. That's the way that meadows work. But if you plant a bird and butterfly garden, just you know, picking out certain plants, you're gonna have a lot more luck. With a meadow, it's usually huge and it's way more difficult to maintain. So it's, it's one of my least favorite garden types. I mean, I love looking at them, but to get established, it's not my favorite. Bird and butterfly is my number one. I, beyond even a rain garden, I wouldn't even put in a rain garden unless you, ha unless you already have a natural swale in your yard, go for it. But I don't wanna dig a hole. I would much rather just put in a bird and butterfly garden <laughs> and direct my water to it, so. Are there any more questions? Yeah, usually if it's just a garden um, and it's got perennials and annuals and stuff, you know, five feet's fine. Um, if you're putting in woody shrubs, trees, 10 feet is minimum, uh, really just because of the root system. But if you're only doing perennials and annuals, you know, five is, that's fine. Yeah, you're not gonna, they, those will not hurt the foundation of your house, whereas a tree can, you know, affect it, so. So Amy just passed out the post test. Um, please fill that out. I'll be in the hallway with the rain barrels um, for those of you who have ordered them. And uh, just please bring your test to me. You can take your rain barrel home. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks. Is there something I didn't answer on the test? I haven't looked at it. Did I answer everything? No, I answered everything. <laughs>